Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about showing notifications, which is a way to notify the users about something that happens in your app. And it will be a little bit more code in this video, but you will need it very often, so make sure to watch it till the end. I've already set up a little activity layout here, which is just a simple button. And when we click on that button later on, we want to show our notification. So make sure to set it up like that. Then we can jump into our main activity. And before Android Oreo, it was actually quite easier to create a notification. But since then, we need what is called a notification channel and we need to create it first. And in this channel, we will post our notifications and this channel will hold the configuration we want to have for our notifications. So once you've set that notification behavior with the channel, you cannot change it afterwards. The first thing we want to do here for the notification channel is we want to globally define a channel ID and a channel name. The channel ID must be unique and it is used to differentiate between several notification channels. So let's write well channel ID and set it to channel ID. It really doesn't matter to what you set it. You can choose whatever you want here and same counts for the name. So let's write val channel name and set it to channel name, whatever. After, the, after that, we want to create a function to actually create our notification channel. So function create notification channel. That function doesn't take any parameters. And as I told you, before Android Oreo, we didn't need to create that notification channel, but after we need. So we should check if that app is currently running on Android Oreo or later or not. And we can do this by a simple by writing a simple if statement here. And we can check if build dot version dot SDK int and then we need to import that build here by pressing Alt plus Enter. If that is greater than or equal to build dot version codes dot O, which is which stands for Android Oreo. So if that is the case, we know that our app is currently running on Android Oreo or later. In this if statement, we want to create our channel. So we write val channel and set it to a new notification channel. We have to pass the channel ID first. Then we have to pass the channel name. And then we have to pass the importance for our channel. Depending on which importance level you would you choose for your channel, it will change whether your notification is directly shown as a heads up notification and also if it comes with a sound effect. So we have different options here. We can choose that by writing notification notification manager dot importance high, importance low, importance min, default, and so on. So I will just use default here. I think that will just show our notification but without any sound effects. If you want sound effects then you have to choose uh, higher not uh, higher importance. Then I will actually move this into the next line and call apply on that because we want to do something with the channel we just created. And in here we can just modify the behavior of our notifications we post in this channel. And just to show you an example what we can do here is we can change the LED light color when our notification shows up. So we cannot test this on, on, on our emulator, of course. But if you test this on your smartphone, then you will see that if this notification shows up and your screen is turned off, then your LED light will blink. And we can change the color by writing light color and set it, for example, to color dot red or color dot green. You can just try around with it. And we also have to call enable lights and set it to true. After we've created that channel, we need to create a notification manager, which will actually create our notification channel. So let's write rel manager and set it to get system service and write notification service in here. And it will insert context dot notification service. But just writing get system service and then passing the notification service is not enough because this function actually returns an any object because you can get several different system services from this function. And this is a very general function. So if we 
click on our manager and press Control Q, then you can see this is actually in any object. And in Kotlin, everything is in any object. Everything inherits from the any class. And because of that, we need to cast that get system service return type to a notification manager to actually tell Kotlin that we want to use the return type as a notification manager. So let's write as notification manager afterwards. And then finally, we can go in the next line and write manager dot create notification channel. And here we need to pass the channel we created above. And then we need, of course need to go into our onCreate function and call that function whenever our app starts. So we only need to do this once. We only need to create this channel once and not before we show every notification or so. So just call this once and onCreate and we're good to go. The next step is to actually create our notification we want to post in our channel. We do this by writing val notification and we set it to notification compat dot builder. Here we need to pass the context so we can just pass this, this and we have to pass our channel ID in which we want to post this notification which is just our channel ID we created above here. And because this is a builder, we can just apply many different functions on this with which we can modify our notification here. For example, we can set the content title, which is the, the title of our notification, and we can just call it awesome notification. Then we can set the content text, which is the description of our notification. This is the content text. We can set an icon to our notification with set small icon. And I actually already included that icon in my project. So you can just do it too. This is r.drawable.ic star, I call it. If you don't know how to do this, then just go to your drawable folder, right click new image asset, and then you can add an icon of a pool of many different icons. And we want to set um, the priority of our notification to something. Don't confuse this with the importance of our notification channel. The importance just describes if the notifications in this channel should um, use sound effects or if they actually should show up in the status bar. And the priority just means how important this specific notification here is. So if, there, if we set the priority to low and there would be another notification that has a higher priority and both would show up at the same time then the Android, uh, the, the Android system would schedule the higher priority notification before the lower priority notification. So we can change this priority by writing notification compat oops notification compat dot priority high, for example. So by writing this, we make sure that our notification actually shows up. And finally, what we need to call is dot build, because if we would just leave it like that, then this would return a builder, but we want to, we wanted to return a notification in this build function. If you click on it and click control and Q, then you can see this returns a notification here. And this is actually what we want here. After that, we need to create a notification manager again, but slightly different than we did before. So let's write val notification manager and set it to notification manager compat dot from and pass the context to it, which is this. And now we are actually um, finally able to show our notification that we created above. So we want to add an on-click listener to our button show notification. And in this, we want to call notification manager, which we created above, dot notify. This notify function will actually show our notification when we click on that button. And for that, we also need to create another ID for our notification. These are many IDs and names here, I know. But let's go up here and create an ID for our notification to differentiate between different notifications. And I'll just set it to zero. This ID is an integer and this ID is a string. 
so don't confuse them. Here we can pass notification ID. And as a second parameter, we need to pass our notification that we created above. So let's write notification here. And now we are able to run our app and display our notification. So let's see what happens when we click on that show notification button. And as you can see, or it did have a sound, but yeah, the notification showed up. It's our tutorials app with a little star icon and it says awesome notification. This is the content text. And also if we close our app or minimize it, then the notification will still be alive. And if we click on it, then nothing will happen. But normally if we click on notifications, the app will open from which the notification is from. But we haven't implemented that behavior yet. So let's actually do that because you usually want to open your app when the user clicks on that notification. So the problem right now is that we are not inside of our own app anymore when we show that notification. I mean, when we show it, we are, but if this notification is inside of our notification bar and we close our app, that single notification does not belong to our app. And therefore we can't just execute code as we want from that notification bar because actually this notification is shown by another internal app in Android, which is called the notification manager. So what we've done here in our code is that we got the system service of the notification manager and which is actually another app. And we told this other app to show our notification that we passed to it. So that other app is actually not allowed to execute code from our, from our app to start our activity, for example, when we click on that notification. And to solve that problem, Android has the concept of pending intents. A pending intent allows another app to execute a piece of code from our app. So we can just use pending intents in this case to execute the piece of code that will open our activity when we click on that notification. So if we want to create a pending intent, we first need to create a normal intent and you should know how to do that. So we write val intent is equal to intent, pass this as context. And as a second parameter, we want to pass the activity class that we want to open. This is just main activity, double colon class.java. And after we've created that intent, we can create our pending intent. So val pending intent and set that to task stack builder dot create. Here we need to pass the context and then we want to call dot run after that, which is a Kotlin scope function used when we want to do some additional configuration on that task stack builder in this case. And after that, we can just return that panning intent that we created in this run block. And if you have the same error as I do here, if you hold on to create, this call requires API level 16, but our account minimum is 15. Um, that function just needs a higher API level than we have chosen as minimum. If we want to change that minimum API level, we can go into our build.gradle file, module app, and go scroll up here to minimum SDK version. The current minimum SDK version is 15, and I'll just set it to 16 here. Sync that Gradle file again, and go back to main activity, and the error is gone. In here, in this run block, we want to call add next intent with parent stack. This will just add this activity that we will open on that notification click. This will add it to our activity back stack. So we are actually able to click on the back button when we opened this activity from the notification and still be able to go back to previous activities. Um, here we want to pass our intent that we created above. And after that, we can call get pending intent. We have to pass a request code for that. I will just pass zero here. And as flags, we want to pass pending intent dot flag update current. That flag just means that when this pending intent already exists, then we want to update, um, we want to keep it and we want to update its data with our new data. And finally, one last thing we need to do is to add this panning intent to our notification we created below here. So let's just call um, set content intent. 
and pass our pending intent. And that's it, we can run our app now. So there we go, let's click on show notification. Then it shows our notification as usual, but if we minimize our app and click on our notification, then our main activity will open again. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there's anything I can improve on, please leave me that feedback in the comments. That would be really helpful for me to improve on my content. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.